Uh, next speaker um, is a member of uh, Ada Core. It he contributes to the GNU Ada compiler. It's Twister Green Girl, and he will speak about 64 bit bar metal programming. Let's applaud him. Light off? Yeah, let's take care of the light. Here you are. Okay. Hello, thank you for coming. So it's a talk about bare metal platform, which is usually things that come without boxes, like that, and particularly without any operating system. So when you program on bare metal platform, you don't use any operating system. Why you want to do that? The main reason is because there is no enough resources to use an operating system. For example, this is Arduino. There is to not enough memory to have an operating system. But there are other reasons. It's fun, <laughs> but it's different from usual. It's fun. You can learn a lot of things, low level things. There's a lot of things to learn about when you do bare metal programming. <coughs> and I have chosen Raspberry Pi 3. Why? Mainly because it's very, very popular which means there are a lot of forums. Uh, there are tutorials about, uh, on the web about uh, how to program directly on Raspberry Pi, and also because it's a very safe platform. You cannot break it. It will always work. However, there are uh, some drawbacks with Raspberry Pi 3 because it's based, it's based on the Broadcom uh, system of chip, there are very few documentation about it. Here is a page about the Raspberry Pi 3 platform documentation, which basically say, okay, it's a ARM V8 CPU, thank you, it's also written in the marketing documentation, and for more documentation, see Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 1. End of, uh, end of the documentation. Um, not enough, but we can deal with that. So you know, maybe you know about the Raspberry Pi family. The first one was the Pi 1, which is based on a very well, rather old uh, ARM core. The Pi 2 was much more interesting because it's based on a new core, and there are four cores, so I wanted it. And the last one is even better because it's four 64-bit cores, so I want it and I want to use it. The architecture of the Raspberry Pi is a little bit weird. There are two, well, there are four ARM 64-bit CPUs that share level two cache. And there are also the video core GPU, which contains the firmware, well, which use the firmware. And they share the memory. The boot process of the platform is interesting because it's, uh, I would say, unusual, because it's the GPU that starts the first, running its firmware, and then loading from the SD card the application into the memory. And then, once the application is loaded, it starts all the CPUs. So the nice things about this platform, the Raspberry Pi platform, is that the CPUs boots start from your code, not from firmware code. Only the GPU use firmware. <coughs> there are a couple of files that, are, that need to be present on the SD card. Some files that are used by the GPU to boot configuration file, which is interesting, and your image that will be loaded in the, in the RAM and will be executed by the ARM CPUs. If you want to execute 64-bit codes, you have to specify some uh, command in the config.txt file. But it's uh, explained. So let's start our first uh, bare metal program. Usually we do things like either blinking LEDs or writing a message 
on the console, so I will use something, uh, I will do something quite common, which is a hello world on the console. And for that, you need a, a, a terminal emulator connected through a serial to USB converter. This is the URL of the code I will show and present to you. So this is a USB to serial converter, and you connect it directly on some pin in the, of the header of the Raspberry Pi 3. Very bare metal. <coughs> Quickly, this is a make file. So there are two main files, the CRTZO, which is the assemb assembly code that is executed, and the main C code. Uh, we don't use any C library. We use a uh, linker script to tell a section are uh, grouped. And we create not an ELF file, ELF file, but a binary file. So at the end, you have to copy this file on the, on the SD card. The CRT0 is the usual name for C run, run time zero, which means the first file to be executed by the, in fact, non-present C runtime. It is generally written in assembly because uh, you do so low-level things that it cannot be expressed by C code. It has to initialize the, car, the board or the card, but in the, on the Raspberry Pi, it's very easy because the GPU does uh, most of the initialization. For example, it does set up the, the RAM, it does set up the video, so everything is much easier on, the, on this platform. However, you still have to create an environment uh, small, well, necessary to execute the um, C code. So this is the whole uh, assembly code for the Hello World. This is the first instruction executed. There are four CPUs, and all the four CPUs are started together, so you need to put into a busy loop three CPU and keep only one, which is done by this code law, by this code. And then you have to initialize the, last CP, the, well, the first CPU, the main CPU. Here you load the stack pointer. Here you clear the memory that has to be cleared for the C environment because all the variables are initialized to zero. This is done here. And finally, you call main. So our C code. C code, well, start with main, like a uh, normal application. And this is the code we have seen previously that's called main. You can do whatever you want to do in C, but there is no sys no syscall so, and no C library, so you have to write everything you want to execute. This is the main code, so there is Next slide for how the uh, UART, so the serial console, is initialized, is initialized. And we do just a puts hello world. Puts is here. It prints every character. And to execute every prank, to print every character, you, we deal with uh, uh, extended uh, backslash n to backslash n backslash r. And this is how to print one character. So we wait until the UART is ready. And when it is ready, we write one byte at one uh, specific location that will have a side effect and will be sent over the serial line. This is how to initialize the UART. So this is most of the code. So this is very bare metal things. We change some bits at some specific address that are specified here. And this has the side effect of initializing, uh, well, here, enabling the UART, specifying number of bits that will be transmitted, specifying the speed of the, of, the, of the UART, and here we have to specify that the pin are, in fact, used for the UART. Okay, very, well, this is documented in the Raspberry Pi documentation, and this is very, very uh, bareboard stuff. To correctly gather all the things and specify a, 
uh, address. We use a Likert script. Okay, nothing very interesting. And then you have your first uh, Hello World program. So what, yet, what can you do next? Except things like uh, Hello World in different languages. You can write your own drivers. Well, if you want to start, you can start with GPIO because that's very easy, just a way to send signal uh, on the headers. Uh, E2C, SPI as a way to communicate using serial protocol, and they are very easy. Re using uh, SD card isn't very difficult to program, but it has a, well, a small stack of things to do to communicate with the SD card. Video is very easy because most of the work, if not all, is done by the GPU firmware. So you just have to say, OK, I want a frame buffer. And uh, you get a reply say, this frame buffer is at this address with that width and that height. You can do drivers if you want for USB, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, except that's much difficult. And documentation is not very, very extensive on these topics. Um, if you want more performance, you have to enable cache, because without cache, well, the CPU starts with cache disabled, which uh, creates uh, abysmal performance. Uh, so you want really to enable cache for performance, except that if you enable cache, you have to specify that IO regions are not cacheable, because IO regions have side effects, so they must be stored, must be go just, must be go to the device, and read must be come to the, from the device. <laughs> and if you want to specify that some regions are not cacheable, you have to set up the MMU, which is a little bit complex. And when in the setup, you specify that some regions are not uh, cacheable. And the easiest way to set up the MMU is to use one one uh, mapping. So no translation, just uh, writes on regions. You can also try to uh, use the four cores. So uh, as we have seen, all the processors start, and we have put three on, in the. Um, in busy loop, uh, there is a specific register to get the core number. So you get a number from one to three. You have to specify a stack for each processor and to execute a specific routine, start routine for each processor. But don't forget to initialize hardware only once. If you want to go even farther, you will have to know that core start at the highest protection level, EL3. And you can switch to lower level, execute, execute code to lower level to go to, well, from ex exception level to hypervisor level, and then from hypervisor level to kernel level. And if you want, you can also go to uh, user level. There are code in the SMP directory that does exactly that. So it sets up. Uh, it enables cache, it sets up uh, MMU, and have, uh, handle all, start all the four cores. What we have done with that, we have done, a, well, one colleague, it's not me, sorry, what colleague has done a recasting uh, demonstra uh, demo, which shows the four cores, which use uh, DMS2D from the GPU to speed up, except that it doesn't use the GPU, and we have reached 60 frames per second. So this is a screenshot, well, not a, a screenshot, a photo, and this is, if I can play it, this is a video from the, the demo. So, bare metal. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for this.